Hello everyone, this is Miss Havisham. I'm at King Charles the Martyr Church in the Peak Forest in Derbyshire once again. I did uh, find that there was one or two things I wanted to highlight. Um, and uh, last time I came was uh, in the winter. Um, now we're into summer. Um, this uh, is very old, this uh, graveyard itself. And I believe that this this graveyard, and I think it's, it must be very, very ancient in some parts. Um, this, the church itself was uh, rebuilt in 1888 and paid for by the Duke of Devonshire, who owned much of the land in this area. Um, they actually demolished the chapel um, that was here before. But I'm not sure whether they did demolish it all. I think they may have incorporated it into this church because that wouldn't make sense to just demolish it. Uh, it was an old um, chapel which would have been um, basically a pagan chapel because this country was pagan uh, pre-1800 and they brought in the Christianity to control the working populace uh, who were quite rebellious. And uh, they were bringing in the factories and uh, the people didn't like it, it was affecting their living. So they had to be controlled. Um, some quite bizarre features. Someone can have a good bonfire with all that wood that's been chopped down, all the branches. This is just uh, exploratory, really, because I'm just uh, revisiting to try to capture something that I didn't capture on the video before, which was a, an old gravestone that was purported to be from 1717. Well, the one was a J, obviously. I take that as a given now, so I don't always say J. I know it's a, it's a J. And so you can take off that off, and it would be 717 in that case. So uh, it's somewhere up there. I'm going to see if I can get it on film. Now, this um, vault here is of the... Thornhill family. Now the Thornhill family were uh, landed people in this area. Uh, they were related to the Saville family um, who were very um, well known um, and noble uh, title family in the Dewsbury area which is in West Yorkshire and that is also in Bonte country. Uh, so this Thornhill family um, were related to the uh, knights who actually came over um, with William the Conqueror. Now, as I've said before, I don't believe the timeline. So I believe that the medieval era was much nearer, and so I believe that William the Conqueror, uh, Gullam of Normandy, he came over uh, much more, nearer more, 500 years ago, not a thousand. Um, these are ones I couldn't see before when it was winter and it was all overgrown. Uh, that one's J749. This ground is very uneven. This one there was. Uh, it looks like 87 years. Not the bit longer, they only want us to think that. So, this is a different vault. Uh, I'm just going to go around here. I'm trying to get my bearings again. This is the Thornhill vault. This is the one. That one's another one. Obviously important with all the railings around, but this one 
is the Thornhill family vault. It's been cleaned up a bit. Now in this gate, what you would do, you would be able to go through this gate and there will be some steps. Um, there are some steps going down, um, down below. That's the idea of the vault, it is down below. And as you can see, this is very ornate. Now, I believe that that is um, that urn on the top with the Greek key design. Uh, as you can see around the outside, there's the oak leaves and then these swirls, uh, as I pointed out before, uh, the swirls that um, curl out, it's like the waves of energy. Uh, they're going up, uh, up, up, up to that urn at the top. The energy is coming up, uh, it's being drawn down. It does conduct both ways and the energy in the ground, in the bones, in the, the spirit of the person who was passed away, the very important person, um, noble family, landowners, that's why they get this this vault, spectacular vault, um, which, which it can be also interpreted as a vault, V-O-L-T, vault, electrical vault. Um, the spikes on the railings, the all conductors for energy. Uh, this is one of the most spectacular vaults I've ever seen, actually. It really is quite spectacular. But these down here um, are very ancient as well. And I think that these were before uh, the, the other graves from the 700s, um, the year of our Lord, 700s. I think some of these, they could have been from even before that. Um, they go back um, hundreds of years. Um, someone, even one of my commentators, actually said they thought that this place looks more like a thousand years old. But these, and the way it's all fallen over, it's very strange. Um, quite dark. It's the stones are knocking these gravestones over. It's not at all even on this. I mean that's in a mound. That in the middle is in a mound. It must be mounded up for a reason like that. It all represents something. Let, let her own works praise her in the gates. Because when you get up there or down there, wherever it is, then you're not judged by St. Peter, who is actually Jupiter. Um, there isn't such a person as St. Peter, it's Jupiter, um, the Roman God. You're judged by yourself. So you will actually look in the mirror and have to look at yourself and be judged by yourself. That's who you judge by. Um, these table, table tombs I always find fascinating. This one here covered by stones. It's going down, I'm going down, then up again and down again. It's so uh, full of subsidence, this place. So those stones are being placed on the top, I think to stop anyone lifting that lid up. But there isn't anything there, it's just 
and the body's down underneath, obviously. But the stones represent a corn or cairn, which is druid. So I think a lot of this is druid. It would have been druid before the 1800s, and that's what the, the religion was. People were practicing druid practices and beliefs. So it was all druid. And that's been cloaked in Christianity. It was actually druid. So you can see the usual trees, holly trees, various trees that uh, we usually find. Not sure where that stone is now that I found before. I think this one was it. I think it was this one. I don't usually touch them. Here lieth, lieth the body. The words are very important. Here, here lieth the body. I mean, it's a lot of it's all lies anyway. And some that were clearer last time. Oh, this is one. That's J. I think that's one. J778. It's not the oldest one I've seen anywhere. These trees are all going out of the bodies because even though there aren't any stones or memorials, the roots reach out and the roots reach out all underneath the ground and they will be being nourished by the corpses underneath and that's the, the purpose of the trees that are planted in the graveyards was to disperse the corpses and that's why there's some that are totally you know full of trees that's the purpose, it's to disperse the corpses and then there aren't as many corpses underneath because it will be uh, being eaten up by the corpse, basically. It sounds quite chilling, but that's the fact. That is what's going on. The, um, the families who were given this land in this area were given the land by uh, William of Normandy and it was parceled out to all his supporters. That's why they ended up being the title gentry and it's gone down to the present day basically. Uh, that's how they got the land. It was given to them by William Duke of Normandy. I sometimes found that these table tombs can look quite spooky. Um, in the shadow of the holly tree, only for the holidays, holy days.
that was also representing the crown of thorns. It is quite a spooky place here. I think it, it would look more spooky in the winter time, which many places do. But actually, I think some of my viewers only saw the uh, version that was the audio version. They didn't actually get to walk around. So this time, um, it's another chance to look around at a different time of year. And this one. 1881 but you can clearly see that is an eye the, the, the one was like an eye and then that's when it was changed over to a one In the 1800s, the clergy were the representatives of the government, and uh, that's why they wore the black frock coats, um, as they were representing uh, the Druid uh, religion. Um, but these ordinary workers, who were the agricultural workers at that time, and then they started working, they were working with the wool and the weaving, and then when they were bringing in the machines, they actually revolted against it. This resulted in the Luddites, uh, the actual clergy were going around with loaded pistol in, in case of any uprisings um, with, by the Luddites um, because they could see their livelihood being destroyed um, by the machines that were being brought in. So that was understandable. They were poor anyway eking out a living and um, of course the clergy they received their living um, from the church and um, the poor people just had to eke out a living and it was being taken away by the introduction of the machines um, so this was why well, they had to be kept under control uh, they were heathen people, they were very wild, um, they couldn't be controlled basically. Um, they were um, proliferating in the population um, from being quite a low population. This would have been after the cataclysm uh, that occurred. Um, population um, was decimated by that and uh, then when it started to proliferate again, uh, everything began again as the agricultural revolution, uh, so-called, followed by the industrial revolution. The people were then brought into the towns to find work because the agricultural work had been decimated by the introduction of the machines. Uh, and then uh, they were brought in to work in the factories and then they were all gui guided to the towns to try to get more work because the country work was uh, decreasing the weaving and the, uh, the wool, the wool combers, uh, the home knitters who used to knit the stockings. They were all skilled workers, but they found that they had lost their livelihoods. Um, people didn't need hand knitted stockings anymore when the machine could produce a lot more of the stockings uh, at a cheaper price. Um, there was no, no help apart from some help from uh, the church charities. Uh, so people became desperate. So this was the uh, beginning of the uh, trade unions with the Luddites. Um, and uh, that was also uh, preceded by the Tolpuddle Martyrs who had risen up against their poor working conditions in agriculture in uh, the village of Tolpuddle in Devon. Um, their reward for rising up and trying to get better conditions was to be given 
seven years hard labour in the colonies. They were shipped to Botany Bay and they uh, had a friend in Parliament, luckily for them, who actually got them a reprieve. So they served four years, but it actually took a year for them to hear the news. Um, and then they were brought back. Uh, that's another story because that was in Devon. Uh, Dorset, actually. Sorry, Dorset. I've been there. Uh, I find this one absolutely fascinating because of the, the scale of this monument. So this was the Thornhill family monument. They're related to the Savills and they're also related to the Jowell family and these families are all related to the Norman nobility. So, I will say one other thing, this church or chapel, before this church was built it was just a chapel, uh, was actually known as the Gretna Green uh, of the Peak because uh, couples who were running away to get married, uh, probably running away from arranged marriages as people used to have back in those days, um, they uh, could come to the Peak and they could uh, get married uh, any day of the week without having the bands read and so this was called the Gretna Green of the Peak uh, and that was until 1804 so that's another aspect lots of young runaways would come here it was quite a romantic place and um, so that note Thank you.